For this tutorial, we're going to take a look at two tabs at once here, our market list and our client list. So this is basically a list of the, the clients we have. These would be grocers, restaurants, private clients, anything like that. And our markets are our farmers markets. So we have a separate list of those. So let's open this up and take a look. So this is not just a, a calculation for farmers markets. It's also basically um, your contact information. So um, you can use the spreadsheet for storing information that you're going to refer to on a regular basis because you're going to be looking at the spreadsheet a lot. So basically it breaks things down by your market, uh, the start and end date of that market, and then calculates the number of weeks. These weeks are important because they help you determine your labor costs. So you can see from May through October, we're doing this farmer's market. Um, from June through October, we're doing this one. So for a while, we're doing two farmer's markets, um, actually three in this scenario. And then we've got uh, this market going over the winter. So this helps us work on our labor costs. Uh, does the calculations here. Here is all simple contact information. Uh, here we've got our, our fees and then we've got our markets attended and so it calculates what our fees over the course of a uh, season are going to be. I've also put in a theoretical cost for, for your kilometers and this is one of those things that uh, you might not really think of here but if you're if you're driving you know these are short distances to our markets but if you're driving 70 or 300 kilometers to your market there's a cost and so we might think of fuel as a separate cost in our production system but at least with this method you can get a sense of allocating a certain value or cost of your fuel towards going to the markets obviously you might have other costs for for for, for other ways you use your vehicle but that just allows you to allow allocate them so this gives you your seasonal cost and then adds them up here as well. Um, I add uh, for Canada, I actually add 12% here and that accounts for your GST and your PST, the two taxes uh, that exist at least in BC. And you can see that's built into the calculation here. I just times everything times 1.12. So if your taxes are different or you don't have any taxes, you can change that number to get a more accurate number. Um, I tend to round things high because if I, if I budget for, you know, five thousand or six thousand dollars in farmers market costs and it comes out at forty eight hundred i've gained but if i if i work it out to forty eight hundred and it costs me six thousand dollars then i haven't planned uh, you know i'm not going to be planning in the same way so that's how i do it i also have um uh, an active or non-active uh, filter here so if we're not doing a market um and this goes to a no oops i shouldn't say that i should just say no um I can just decide here, it's just like, I don't want to see the no's, I only want to see the yeses. So this just shows me only what's active. And then when I want to look at everything, I select all and that shows up again. So this again, it allows me to have an archive of all the markets because maybe over the course of a few years, I'll do 10 to 15 different markets, but I might only have four active markets at any given time. So that allows you to just uh, manipulate that a little bit. So close this up and then head over to the client list, which is built very much the same way. Open that up. So same thing. We've got our customer name in here. Now I have a buffer in here, uh, which I'll come to in a second. But same thing, active. And this one has drop down menus. I'll actually just add them to the other one as well. So you just select again. Oh, you know, we just lost restaurant six. and We just lost grocer one and we just lost pickup two. Obviously, those aren't their real names. And then I just want to see the yeses. And you can see a few of those disappear. So that just makes it a little easier to keep things sorted. And just so you're only seeing what you need to see. All your contact information is here. And that's all there is for this. I don't put a fuel cost in here. Um, it's just a little too complicated for this. But uh, gives you uh, the market one gives you an idea because it's a set distance all the time. So that's a look at our client list and our market list. What's important here is this, these customers that are listed here and the clients, the markets that are listed, feed into our crop planner. And so the crop planner is where we do all our, our order, enter our orders to determine how much to sow. And so for something to show up in the crop planner, it must be in one of these two lists. So just like our, our crop details we looked at previously, uh, this market and client list is where we need to put stuff in order to feed the rest of the spreadsheet. So now that we've took a, uh, taken a look at a lot of this sort of preliminary um, information that goes into the spreadsheet, we're going to move over to the crop planner. 
and that's where you're going to spend most of your time on the spreadsheet uh, planning and coordinating your crops.